name's Helen Ottowell, and I'm going to just talk to you today a little bit about liberation and the couple of days leading up to it in Jersey and Guernsey. At the beginning of May 1945, it was clear that the Allies were going to win the war against the Germans, and after five long years, the war would finally be ended. On the 6th of May, the German officials met with the Jersey's bailiff, Alexander Kutosch, the man here in the suit and the dark hair, with the Attorney General to discuss what to do in the Channel Islands and how to liberate them. However, the German commander, Vice Admiral Hofmeyer, refused to surrender, saying that he had not had orders from his own government and that he would not do so. Despite this, Jersey had begun preparing for liberation. Islanders had kept up with news from the um, mainland on hidden crystal radio sets and knew that an end to the war was close. They'd heard reports of Hitler's death in Berlin on their hidden radios and by the 7th of May the German army had surrendered in Europe but the Channel Islands were still under German command. The Allied military powers had been busy making plans to liberate the Channel Islands from their occupation and from the German forces. A British military operation called Nest Egg had been set up to bring troops into the island and free them from the forces. They took aerial photographs, the one you can see here, so they could see where they could safely land and put their boats. These British army units were called Force 135. They received their orders to move to Portsmouth whilst their commander, Brigadier Snow, and a small number of troops from the force left the Channel Islands aboard HMS Bulldog and Beagle. The rest of the troops were going to follow a few days later. Islanders were getting ready for liberation. The Allies' victory in Europe was front page in the JEP, and Islanders were informed that the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill would broadcast the nation's first official announcement that afternoon at 3 p.m. Crowds began to gather at various locations around the island to hear the announcement that would declare the liberation of Europe and the liberation of the Channel Islands. Churchill announced the end to the war in Europe and the unconditional surrender of all German land, sea and air forces in Europe, when amidst great cheers across the island, he uttered the words that are so familiar and resonant with us today, saying, our dear Channel Islands are also to be free today. From a balcony overlooking the Royal Square, Bailiff Alexander Kutosch gave an impassioned address about the forthcoming liberation and proceeded to sing a rendition of the British national anthem. He became so emotional doing it, he came down from the balcony and stood on the steps of the Royal Square. Union Jack flags and other items that had been forbidden under the Germans miraculously reappeared, which added to the celebrations. Parties continued throughout the rest of the day with several bonfire and firework place displays taking place. At 7.15, on the 9th of May, on the quarter deck of HMS Bulldog, second in command for Jersey, General Siegfried Hein signed the instrument of surrender in Guernsey. And at midday, Bailiff Coutanche met with the German commanders from Jersey on HMS Beagle in St. Obin's Bay, and the surrender for Jersey was signed. The Channel Islands were officially liberated. A proclamation from Brigadier Snow and King George added to the celebrations for the islanders. The first troops from Force 135 were sent to secure control of St Helier and officially announced the liberation. There were huge crowds that greeted the liberating forces and they were met with joyous cheers and celebration. Lieutenant Colonel WPA Robertson and his team arrived at the Pomme d'Or, marched through the harbour up to the hotel and went inside. The German swastika flag was ordered from down from the hotel, hotel balcony and at 3.40 p.m. the Union Jack flag was raised, officially signalling the end of the German occupation. The celebrations continued and islanders celebrated their freedom. Some got soldiers to sign their ID cards. They were so thrilled with seeing their final their liberators here. Islanders travelled, especially into St Helier to see the troops and celebrate their long for freedom after five long hard years of German occupation. For some though, liberation had to wait. They had to celebrate with family and friends later than May the 9th. Those that were evacuated before the occupation were still in England. 
or those that had been deported to Germany to the prison camps had to wait to come back to the island. But freedom would come for everyone eventually. And today we celebrate the liberation of Jersey on the 9th of May, 